Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back, random show, random show. The Excellence English Show, episode number seven five, no seven seven five. What's happening? What's crack a lacking? Hope you're all well wherever this live stream may find you, and this podcast and whatever else you're listening to. Hope you are doing well wherever this little show may find you. I hope you are all doing swimmingly. Today's a special day because Drake has replied back to Kendrick after the incredible, incredible, thought-provoking this, not like us. Drake has responded back, clapped back to the old Kendrick and proved me right, right? He's proved me right because I knew all along that he was that guy. He wasn't going to let, you know, Kendrick come on and dance on his head top. So he's back in full effect, proving me right. I'm so happy this is the case. Um, For those of you who are watching this particular live stream live on the pod and stuff, whatever it may be. So please bear with me as I do what needs to be done and support my boy Drake in his never ending war to end and eliminate Kendrick. Even though he doesn't really want to do that, you know, I'm still supporting him regardless. So please bear with me as we kind of get for it now. So first time listening to it, haven't checked it out myself. Going to be listening to it with fresh flipping ears. So for those of you who've already heard it, don't spoil for it. Don't spoil it for me in the chat, okay? Don't be flipping mugs. Don't spoil it for me. Let me listen to it by myself on my own like a big boy. And let's hear what Drake has to say regarding what's going on now. So let's go. The Heart Part 6 featuring Drake. Response back to Not Like Us. Fingers crossed it's good. Fingers crossed it's good. Let's fucking go. Surprise winner is definitely spiraling. I got your fucking lines tapped. I swear that I'm dialed in. First, I was a rat, so where's the proof of the trial then? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Yeah, we're locked in. We're locked in. We're locked in. That was good. First line already. I'm fucking feeling it. Let's fucking go. We're going to rewind that back. We're going to rewind about that. That was good. Pull it surprise winner. Yeah, bro. Let's fucking go. You don't take your Pulitzer Prize to the club, bitch. Now let me see you. Prove it. Just let me see you. Prove it. All right. The Pulitzer Prize winner is definitely spiraling. Mm. I got your fucking lines tapped. I swear that I'm dialed in. Mm. First I was a rat, so where's the proof of the trial then? Mm. Where's the paperwork of the cabinet is filed in? Mm. 1090 Jake would have took all the walls down. Mm. The streets would have had me hiding out in a small town. Mm. My Montreal connects stand up, not far down. Mm. The ones that you getting your stories from, they all clowns. Yeah. I don't know what oh, I knew it. I knew he would have let me down. I fucking knew it. Not like us was hard one to come back from. Not like us was hard to come back from, but he's so far. He's proved me correct. He is who we say he is. Drake is who we fucking say he is. Oh, God, that was good. Let's continue on. Let's continue on. Bear with me a second as I rearrange some things on my side here. (laughs) Yo! One more time. One more time. Rewind that back. Rewind back. Rewind that back forward. Come on. Surprise winner is definitely spiraling. I got your fucking lines tapped. I swear that I'm dialed in. First, I was a rat, so where's the proof of the trial? In where's the paperwork of the cabinet is filed in? 1090 Jake, one more, took one more, one more, one more time, one more time, one more time, one more time. We got to get this volumes up. We have to get the volume up on here, man. Well, I'll go on for this. Why does it feel like it's too low? All right, cool. It's not too low now. Let's get this all up and going, bro. We need to get the volume up in this bitch. Fucking up, 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 up. Let's go. Let's go. One more time. Now let me see you. Prove it. Just let me see. Now let me see you. Prove it. Just let me see you. Prove it. All right. 
Pulitzer Prize winner is definitely spiraling. I got your fucking lines tapped, I swear that I'm dialed in. First I was a rat, so where's the proof of the trial then? Where's the paperwork of the cabinet is filed in? 1090 Jake would have took all the walls down. The streets would have had me hiding out in a small town. My Montreal connects stand up, not far down. Woo! The ones that you get in your stories from, they all clowns. I am a war general, season in preparation. My jacket is covered in medals, honor and decoration. You waited for this moment, overcome with the desperation. We plotted for a week and then we fed you the information. A daughter that's 11 years old, I bet he takes it. We thought about giving a fake name or a destination. But you so thirsty, you not concerned with investigation. Instead, you in that Venice studio, it's a celebration. You gotta learn to fact check things and be less impatient. Your fans are rejoicing, thinking this is my expiration. Even my boy, my fucking boy. <laughs> yeah, bro, yeah. Hey, big up the stream chat. Um, big up Moogie. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you, Moogie. I think if I wasn't such a fan of the musicy, then I probably wouldn't be as clocked in as I am now. I think there's a bunch of people who just kind of, you know, blanked out of this because I've. I, I've definitely seen there's a different reaction and locked inness from the first couple of disc records to now. I think some people are just not even paying attention to it. There's a side of the internet that just doesn't care what's going on with this. Um, I feel like everybody was really locked in at the beginning, but now it feels like, you know, it's almost like, you know, when you go to like a house party and like, you know, it's like ladies and fellas and then somebody, somebody grabs an ox and then depending on who, what tune plays on the ox is very much dependent on who stays. So if the if the fellas get the ox, then most likely the ladies leave. That's what it kind of feels like. It feels like all the ladies have left, <laughs> all the gays have left, and it's just us lads listening to this shit. No one else is clocking this shit because, you know, it's a bit exhausting. These guys going back and forth. That's what it kind of feels like. So I definitely understand what you mean, man. This is a lot to kind of pay attention to. But, you know, what can we do? What else do we have to do? Let's fucking go. One more time from the fucking top. No interruptions this time. No interruptions for me. One more time. All the way through. Let's fucking go. Now let me see you prove it. Just let me see you prove it. All right. The Pulitzer Prize winner is definitely spiraling. I got your fucking lines tapped. I swear that I'm dialed in. First I was a rat, so where's the proof of the trial then? Where's the paperwork of the cabinet is filed in? 1090 Jake would have took all the walls down. The streets would have had me hiding out in a small town. My Montreal connects stand up, not far down. The ones that you get in your stories from, they all clowns. I am a war general, season in preparation. My jacket is covered in medals, honor and decoration. You waited for this moment, overcome with the desperation. We plotted for a week and then we fed you the information. A daughter that's 11 years old i bet he takes it we thought about giving a fake name or a destination but you so thirsty you not concerned with investigation instead you in that venice studio it's a celebration you gotta learn to fact check things and be less impatient your fans are rejoicing thinking this is my expiration even the picture you use the jokes and the medication the maybach glove and the drug he uses for less inflation master manipulator you bit on a speculation you dumb and reactive nigga i'm petty with dedication what about the bones we dug up in that excavation and why isn't Whitney denying all of the allegations? Why is she following Dave free and not Mr. Morale? You haven't seen the kids in six months, the distance is wild. Dave leaving heart emojis underneath pics of the child. Speaking of anything with a child, let's get to that now. This Epstein angle was the shit I expected. TikTok videos you collected and dissected. Instead of being on some disdirect shit, you'd rather fucking grab your pen and misdirect shit. My mom came over today and I was like, mother, I... Mother I, mother ah, wait a second. That's that one record where you say you got molested. Oh, yo, 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 yo. We're back, we're back, we're back, we're back. They tried to get me out of the paint. They tried to get me out of the paint. You see it, you see it, huh? Kendrick fans tried to get me out of the paint, bro. These Kendrick fans tried to get me out of the paint, bro. They tried to get me out of here, man. You feel me? Try to stream snipe, man. You feel me? Nah, 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 nah. We don't run that. We don't run that. Play fair or get rolled over, bro. This is such a good response. Measured and f and just direct. You feel me? But we're back in the sector. Random show episode number. What was it again? 
what are we again? 775, yeah? 775, we're back in the sector, rolling in, rolling deep, no flipping delays, okay? We're back, we're ready to flip and roll, let's fucking go. They tried to get me out of the paint. They tried to take me out, man. They're not even playing fair. These motherfuckers aren't even playing fair, bro. They're not even playing fair. Imagine trying to get me out of the paint. For what? Supporting my boy, Drizzy Drake, huh? All right, cool. Whatever you say, whatever you say. Anyway, for those of you tuning in live and direct, as I said previously, TTS is off for the moment. If any donations or if any donations or super chats come through, I'll read those at the end. I'll most likely turn them back on again after I finish listening to the tracks. But I want to listen to the potency, the directness, the savageness, the career-ending bars from Drake to Kendrick. This is Drake's reply to "Not Like Us." It's the heart part six. Obviously, um, you know the name is lending from the epic series from fucking Kendrick that he started. I think since overly dedicated and maybe a few tracks before that. So we're gonna listen to Drake's response response it's fucking fire already i've listened to a bit of it already now two minutes in and it's already fucking fire so we're gonna go again from the top we're not gonna delay we're gonna go right into the fucking top let's fucking go let's fucking go exactly dotsky the foe the track is too hot for the fucking stream they're trying to stop man they're trying to they're trying to they're trying to they're trying to take me out man for listening to a song come on bro come on let's go one more time let's fucking go no fucking delay Let's do this. Let's fucking do this. Drake the Heart Part 6. Surprise winner is definitely spiraling. I got your fucking lines tapped. I swear that I'm dialed in. First, I was a rat, so where's the proof of the trial then? Where's the paperwork of the cabinet is filed in? 1090 Jake would have took all the walls down. The streets would have had me hiding out in a small town. My Montreal connects stand up, not fall down. The ones that you get and get stories from, they all clowns. I am a war general, season in preparation. My jacket is covered in medals, honor, and decoration. You waited for this moment, overcome. With the desperation, we plotted for a week and then we fed you the information. A daughter that's 11 years old, I bet he takes it. We thought about giving a fake name or a destination, but you so thirsty, you not concerned with investigation. Instead, you in that Venice studio, it's a celebration. You gotta learn to fact check things and be less impatient. Your fans are rejoicing, thinking this is my expiration. Even the picture you use, the jokes and the medication, the Maybach glove and the drug he uses for less inflation. Master manipulator, you bid on a speculation. You Dumb and reactive, nigga. I'm petty with dedication. What about the bones we dug up in that excavation? And why is it Whitney denying all of the allegations? Why is she following Dave Free and not Mr. Morale? You haven't seen the kids in six months. The distance is wild. Dave leaving heart emojis underneath pics of the child. Speaking of anything with a child, let's get to that. This Epstein angle was the shit I expected. TikTok videos you collected and dissected. Instead of being on some diss direction, you rather fucking grab your pen. And misdirection. My mom came over today and I was like, Mother, mother, I, mother, I, mother, I, mother, I, I, wait a second. second. That's that one record where you say you got molested. Oh, fuck me. I just made the whole connection. This about to get so depressing. This is trauma from your own confessions. This when your father leave you home alone with no protection. So neglected. That's why these pedophile raps and shit you so obsessed with It's so excessive, they acting like it's so aggressive But you just never known affection I don't want to dish you anymore This really got me second guessing Touch my body by my ride, carry play You probably start reflecting I never been with no one under age But now I understand why this the angle that you really mess with Just for clarity, I feel disgusted I'm too respected If I was fucking young girls, I promise I'd have been arrested I'm way too famous for the shit you just suggested But that's not the lesson, clearly there's a deeper message deep cuts that never healed and now they got infected like if dave really fucked your girl and got her pregnant talk about freedom resentment not sure how to ease the sentiment this shit's too intimate i'm praying you recover from both incidents but you a piece of shit so this shit really no coincidence Drake is not a name that you gonna see on no sex offender list easy does it you mentioned an a minor but niggas gotta be sharp and tell the fans who was it you thought you left d flat d major I slit your throat with the razor uh, and Rick Ross air like that one flight from Malaysia. Your baby mama's saver. Only fucking with Whitney's, not Millie Bobby Browns. I never look twice at no teenager. I'm a fucking hit maker, dog, not a peacemaker. Yeah, but. 
bullets that I'm stuffing in each chamber. Your ass in extreme danger. Stop buying views and buy comments. You may as well keep the big bush shit you about to need for later. I give a fuck about your streaming data. You could drop a hundred more records. I'll see you later. Yeah, maybe when you meet your maker. I don't want to fight with a woman beater. It feeds your nature. If you still bumping R. Kelly, you could thank the savior. So the nigga his music and your music is going to a hypocrite. I don't understand why these people praise you. Sounding like you sent him commissary when he needs some paper. Album dropping soon, no wonder you turn a clout chaser instead of doing hard labor. Nigga, I see you when I see you like Fantasia. And Whitney, you can hit me if you need a favor. And when I say I hit your back, it's a lot safer. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this shit was some, some good exercise, like, Woo! it's good to get out, get the pen working. You would be a worthy competitor if I was really a predator and you weren't fucking lying to every blogger and editor, but it is what it is. You definitely got this shit burnt the fuck out, though, like, <laughs> you got ten more records to drop. The one before the last one, we finessed you into telling a story that doesn't even exist. And then you go and drop the West Coast one to try and cover that up. <laughs> I would like that one. That, that, that would be some shit I could dance to if you wasn't tripling down on some whole other bullshit. But, you know, at least your fans are getting some raps out of you. I'm happy I can motivate you. Yeah. Bring you back to the game. Yeah. Right? You know, Talk your shit. Talk your just shit. Just let me know when we get into the facts. Everything in my shit is facts. Yeah. Took your you to shit, Drake. Favor, like. Took your fucking shit. Yeah, took your shit, man. Let's get to the facts. Let's get to the facts. I really enjoyed that. I thought that was hard. I don't know what the fuck in it saying. Oh, it wasn't that good a response. Shut up, man. Shut up. When's the last time you got a dance record out of Kendrick? Come on, man. Shut up, man. Exactly. He gave you one good, decent dance record and everyone's fucking getting excited. That was fucking hard. Let's not lie. That was hard. That was more than fucking good. More than good. Bar for bar, spa for spa, line for line. Now, he's, now he needs to come back with direct, direct stuff. Do you know what I mean? Direct shit, direct shit. Come on, man. Come on. Let's fucking go. That was fucking good. I really enjoyed that. I'm not sure what people are talking about. I really bloody enjoyed that. I thought that was absolutely incredible. I was really, really infused with that record. I'm not even going to lie. I was fucking infused. I'm going to... So infused, I'm going to fucking get the lyrics up on Genius. I'll have to give it a first listen to with Virgin Ears and then get the Genius up here to see what I want for real. And then we're going to spin that back one more time without my fucking breathing in the background. Let's fucking go, man. I, I, I love the opening line, to be fair. The Pulitzer Prize winner is definitely spiraling. Oh, I fucking love it. You know what I mean? Kendrick open his mouth, give him a Grammy now. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love how much... I love how much Kendrick hates Drake. And I love how much Drake despises Kendrick. I, fu I fucking love it. Because they're two sides of the same coin, but they hate each other's artistry on either side. Do you know what I mean, Kendrick hates that Drake is commercial and super successful, and Drake hates the fact that Kendrick gets away with being like ephemeral and like you know mysterious and backpacky and like you know takes time away and shit. I love it. I love it. Unfortunately, I would want both of these guys on the same record because I think it would absolutely destroy. I'd love to see the debates if they did a mixtape together or something on EP together and they did, and they, just, and they went back to back, bar for bar, bar for bar. I think it would be phenomenal. It would be so cool to see the debates online about who had the better verse and shit. But unfortunately, we're never going to get that. We're never, ever going to get these two guys on the same record. That's the only sad thing about the beef. The beef is like getting to a point now, especially with Drake, you know, basically saying that one of Kendrick's kids has been fathered by his fucking best friend and manager and agent guy in fucking day three. Those type of allegations you put out there aren't great. Um, the fact that Drake is exposed, that Kendrick might have a fetish for the old white ladies out there um, is definitely not great either. I wonder as well, is, that, is there any connection between that, between allegedly Kendrick's wife is half Norwegian and I think in Mr. Morale, he basically confesses to cheating a lot and I think a lot of it has to do with when he came to Europe and specifically when he, he went to Scandinavia. He was piping down everything that was moving. So I wonder if that's any connection to that, whether or not he's just, he's just got like a Scandi thing, whether or not that's one of his little, you know, what about something he's just, you know, he just can't avoid the old Scandi thing.
Um, but anyway, let's just play it one more time. I'm going to play it without my mouth noises, without my fucking breathing, because I fucking love this record. I really fucking do. Let's go. Let's hear this, man, because this is this is fucking awesome. Surprise winner is definitely spiraling. I got your fucking lines tapped. I swear that I'm dialed in. First, I was a rat, so where's the proof of the trial in? Where's the paperwork of the cabinet is filed in? 1090 Jake would have took all the walls down. The streets would have had me hiding out in a small town. My Montreal connects stand up, not far down. The ones that you get in your stories from, they all clowns. I am a war general, season in preparation. My jacket is covered in medals, honor and decoration. You waited for this moment, overcome with the desperation. We plotted for a week and then we fed you the information. A daughter that's 11 years old, I bet he takes it. We thought about giving a fake name or a destination. But you so thirsty, you not concerned with investigation. Instead, you in that Venice studio, it's a celebration. You gotta learn to fact check things and be less impatient. Your fans are rejoicing, thinking this is my expiration. Even the picture you use, the jokes and the medication. The Maybach glove and the drug he uses for less inflation. Master manipulator, you bid on the speculation. You dumb and reactive nigga, I'm petty with dedication. What about the bones we dug up in that excavation? And why isn't Whitney denying all of the allegations? Why is she following Dave free and not Mr. Morale? You haven't seen the kids in six months, the distance is wild. Dave leaving heart emojis underneath pics of the child. Speaking of anything with a child, let's get to that now. This Epstein angle was the shit I expected. TikTok videos you collected and dissected. Instead of being on some disdirect shit, you rather fucking grab your pen and misdirect shit. My mom came over today and I I was like, mother I, mother I, mother I, wait a second. That's that one record where you say you got molested. Oh, fuck me, I just made the whole connection. This about to get so depressing. This is trauma from your own confessions. This when your father leave you home alone with no protection, so neglected. That's why these pedophile raps and shit you so obsessed with It's so excessive, they acting like it's so aggressive But you just never known affection I don't wanna dish you anymore, this really got me second guessing Touch my body by Mariah Carey play, you probably start reflecting I never been with no one underage But now I understand why this the angle that you really mess with just for clarity, I feel disgusted, I'm too respected If I was fucking young girls, I promise I'd have been arrested I'm way too famous for the shit you just suggested But that's not the lesson, clearly there's a deeper message Deep cuts that never healed and now they got infected Like if Dave really fucked your girl and got her pregnant Talk about breeding resentment Not sure how to ease the sentiment, this shit's too intimate I'm praying you recover from both incidents But you a piece of shit, so this shit really no coincidence Drake is not a name that you gon' see on no sex offender list Easy does it you mentioned an A minor, but niggas gotta be sharp and tell the fans who was it. You thought you left D flat, D major. I slit your throat with the razor and do Rick Ross air like that one flight from Malaysia. I'm your baby mama screensaver. Only fucking with Whitney's, not Millie Bobby Browns. I never look twice at no teenager. I'm a fucking hit maker, dog, not a peacemaker. Yeah, bullets that I'm stuffing in each chamber. Yo ass in extreme danger. Stop buying views and buy comments. You may as well keep the paper. Shit you about to need for later. I give a fuck about your streaming data. You could drop a hundred more records. I'll see you later. Yeah, maybe when you meet your maker. I don't want to fight with a woman beater. It feeds your nature. If you still bumping R. Kelly, you could thank the savior. Said if they deleted his music, then your music is going to a hypocrite. I don't understand why these people praise you. Sounding like you said them commissary when he needs some paper. I'll be dropping soon. No wonder you turn a clout chase instead of doing hard labor. Nigga, I see you when I see you like Fantasia. Whitney, you can hit me if you need a favor. And when, when I, I say, say I hit you back, back, it's a lot safer. I promise. I promise. Woo! Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, this shit was some some good exercise. Like, it's good mm. to get out, get the pen work through. Yeah. You would be a worthy competitor if I was really a predator and you weren't fucking lying to every blogger and editor, yeah, but... It is what it is. It is what it is. You definitely got this shit burnt the fuck out, though, like... Mm. You got ten, ten more records to drop. The one before the last one, we finessed you into telling a story that doesn't even exist. And then you go and drop the West Coast one to try and cover that up. 
I would like that one. That, that, that would be some shit I could dance to if he wasn't <laughs> tripping down on some other <laughs> bullshit. But, you know, at least your fans are getting some raps out of you. I'm happy I can motivate you, bring you back to the game. Like, you know, but just let me know when we're getting to the facts. Everything in my shit is facts. I'm waiting on you to return the favor, like. <laughs> as a Drake fan and as a fan of music, I think this end bit is a bit funny. I don't know why. He sounds kind of mad. <laughs> he sounds kind of mad. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know. He sounds really annoyed that Kendrick had that. He's got one in this in this beef. Kendrick definitely got one hit record. In not like us, right? That's definitely a bop. Drake sounds pissed off about that. Like he sounds pissed off that Kendrick has used the beef to generate a hit, and now he's getting loads of love for it, and people are saying it's dead because that's that's a narrative online. The narrative online is that the beef was over as soon as not like us dropped because some freaks out there have it like free zero that Drake didn't have any records that beat, which which is fucking insane. I had it at 2-2. Two, two. Um, when Not Like Us dropped, I had it at 3-2. Um, now, personally, I have it at 3-3. Three, three. You guys can say what the fuck you want, but I think I think this is definitely not as far flung on either side. Like, I think if you're being favourable, if you want to be super favourable, you'd probably say Kendrick's up maybe 3-2, three, 3-1. Three, but to say Drake hasn't got one record that has beat Kendrick and his beef is fucking insane. Especially when one record was fucking a verse. You know what I mean? Half, you know, a, a, what, a 32 verse on a fucking record that isn't yours doesn't count as you winning. I don't care how good it is. It's not that good. So um, anyway, that beside it, I feel like Drake got a little bit pissed off that he was able, Kendrick was able to generate a hit record and not like us. So he seems a little bit agitated about that. Um, The whole... The whole facts thing is what I'm not really too sure about. I'm not going to lie because I think I think lying and misdirection in rap beefs is kind of what it's about. Rap beefs aren't really about telling the facts or the truth. It's about lying. It's about lying, misdirection and about casting doubt. Like whenever you watch battle rap, sometimes you don't know if the person that's rapping in that battle knows that information. If they're alluding to something that might be true, or if they're just making it up and trying to throw aspersions on somebody because they might look a certain way. If they call them a PDF, does it mean they're a PDF? Or is he saying they're a PDF because they look like a PDF? Do you know what I mean? So sometimes just throwing out shit and seeing what sticks is the right way to go about with beefs. Because if it was just about facts, it'd be a bit boring. You kind of have to in include a little bit. It's like, um, it's like when fighters promote fights. Do you know what I mean? That trash talk, you know, you just say shit for the sake of saying it to get under someone's skin hoping that they're going to react so i don't really get why drake is pissed off that kendrick might be running with the narrative like he lacks kids and stuff right obviously it isn't true we know drake isn't out here smashing 16 year olds but it is funny and it does cast aspersion and make him look away when we see clips of him on the stage with a girl that says she's 17 and he's kissing you know i mean and of course the millie bobby brown stuff texting her which i which i think was blown out of proportion personally um i think it's perfectly reasonable like if fucking Courtney Kardashian, remember Courtney Kardashian? If the Kardashian were hanging around, if, wasn't Courtney Kardashian like hang fucking Justin Bieber when he was like late teens or something? Do you remember that era? There was an era where where Justin Bieber was like with the Kardashians all the time. So this is a thing in Hollywood. Young kids just hang out with the older folk. Um, who's that other girl? Uh, something. What's her name? Is it Addison Lee? Is it or, or, or Addison Ray? Addison Ray again, she's a young girl, but she was hanging around with Courtney Kardashian for a while. Like, and they were kind of friends when it's weird because that should be her auntie. Hollywood is just odd like that. So the Drake and Millie Bobby Brown thing, I didn't really think much of it. I just thought that was like more so Drake, you know, quote unquote being inspired by her on like Stranger Things and wanting to lend a helping hand. Like she texted him and says, oh, I'm a big fan of you. Like, because I think that's what basically happened. Like she reached out to him first and said, yeah, okay, cool. You're a big fan. Hey, I'm Drake. Let me just give you some advice about the industry and shoot some shit yes it looks a bit funny that he's texting a girl that's that young but i don't think it's as malicious as people try to make it make it seem as but again it doesn't matter it's a beef kendrick kendrick did well to run with that narrative because there's a lot of that there's a lot of people out there who think that drake is some sort of um you know molester or something so i think that was a smart tactic to kind of go with um again I think in general, it's a fucking hard diss track. I'm not going to lie. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was nice to hear him kind of calm and measured 
and just going for Kendrick's jugular. Um, if anything, I think maybe the approach of uh, maybe the because maybe the order is wrong. Maybe Drake should have dropped this after six sixteen. Maybe that way around. And then when Kendrick dropped Not Like Us, he should have dropped, you know, um, Family Matters. Maybe it would have looked a bit better because when he dropped Family Matters and then Kendrick dropped Not Like Us and then you drop this, you kind of lower the tempo down, right? You're kind of bringing it back slower again. You're kind of being a bit more methodical. You're being a little bit more serious and direct. But everyone's still got Not Like Us over your whole in their head, do you know what I mean? So it's probably hard to get out of your head and think this is a good record. But in isolation, if you just listen to this without thinking about all the other shit... And just listen to this record by itself. It's a fucking... It's fire flames. No choruses, no nothing. Just straight verses of him just dissecting and going through fucking Kendrick and reminding everybody that he's that guy. Um, I'd love to I'd love to hear Kendrick address the day free shit, though. If that's true, that's fucking insane. Your best friend and agent, manager, whatever, the guy you run the label with, allegedly fucked your girl and, and got her pregnant and then that kid is now his but you don't know or you do know and you're just keeping it out of the fucking public eye because that could be a thing imagine because kendrick said on mr morale that he cheated a bunch right that was he's like 444 cool so imagine they agreed behind the scenes to just be okay with it like hey you did your dirt he did dirt with me one day because he was comforting me and you know because this it, it tends to happen uh, this happens more often than not doesn't it it's quite sad when it does happen. Like a best friend getting with their his best friends like misses is a is a story as old as time. But I'd like to hear Drake address it directly. Because we have got the cover out here, right? That features a DM between Drake and Day Three twenty two weeks ago with uh with the black heart emoji and him putting a heart sign. So I'm not too sure what this is relating to. Maybe his Drake is saying, Hey, I speak to Day Three. Like me and Day Three were cool at one point, so which is odd as well, right? If Kendrick is beefing with Drake or if Kendrick hates Drake, like, why is Day Free talking to Drake? You know, that's an odd thing. I'd be pissed off. Like, I don't necessarily, I wouldn't tell anybody not to talk to somebody because I'm not, I, I'm not, I don't want anyone to feel that I'm that bothered. But it would make me feel a way if I found out that my best friend and business partner was talking to a guy who I'm a, you know, I, I declared who I fucking hate, basically, saw an enemy of. Um, who I don't agree with at all in any point of view. I don't stand for what he stands for. You know, whatever. I, I would I would feel away if I was Kendrick if I found out Day Three was talking to Drake and they were on DM terms to so the point where he's sending him black heart emojis and shit. That's some wild shit, bro. I'm not gonna lie. That's some wild shit. That is some wild, 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 wild shit. But I love it, man. I love it. What do you mean look at the likes? Oh, the likes. Okay, I, I don't care about that shit, man. Like, I I form my own opinion. My own opinion is the fucking record is fire. Um, the likes, what's that? The likes here, I said 384,000 upvotes, 251 downvotes. So I guess by the internet terms, this is the first L that Drake has taken, via the, if you agree by the internet terms. Personally, I don't give a fuck what the internet thinks. Um, I have my own opinion, and I think this record is hard. But I guess the internet doesn't agree. The internet, um, but you know, it's very close, but basically the internet is saying they don't like it. Let me refresh it one more time shit that's kind of bad i'm not gonna lie drake doesn't drake never gets this kind of ratio does he um again i like the record but drake doesn't really get this ratio wow okay the views are still where they are right four million views i refresh the screen again let's see what the ratio is saying now again the ratio okay now it's four hundred and six thousand to to uh, upvotes or likes to 279,000 dislikes. But still a little bit too close for, for comfort, isn't it? You don't want that. It's not that great. But still. Where's the paperwork of the cabinet is filed in? 1090 Jake would have took all the walls down. The streets would have had me hiding it's, but that's out in small town. But it's not trash, though. What is this? It's not trash. Why are people saying it's trash? It's not trash. You might not like it, but it's not. Again, these. I think this, um, this is why I, I remember I stopped talking hip hop on this channel and stuff, or just in general online. There's so many. The, the, why do people use such big language? Trash. Like, like, it, how is this trash? Like, when have you heard Drake spit like this? Like, since everyone's been begging him to rap, rap. He's rap now, rapping, and everyone's saying it's trash. Trash in comparison to what? To what Kendrick put out? One of the best MCs in the, in the game. A guy that people didn't think Drake could fucking compete against. Come on, bro. Come on. Trash, you know. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> like I said, the order is messed up. Maybe Drake should have released this 
after 6.16 in LA. Maybe. But to say it's trash is, you're being like, you know, you're lying to yourself. The, the, the record isn't trash. Um, let's see if there's anything else dropped. Let me go on Hip Hop Reddit quickly. And let's see if anything else dropped. Actually, let me go on the Hip Hop Reddit and I want to see what the, what the, what the fucking climate is. Because the Hip Hop, I know, I know Hip Hop Heads Reddit isn't the best, you know, judge. But let's see what Hip Hop Reddit is saying anyway in general. I'm curious to see what they're saying. Oh, really? Rick Ross responded. What? What did Rick Ross say? Huh. Okay, let's see what Rick Ross said. Rick Ross also got involved. Let's see what people are saying on the Heart Part 6 subreddit. So Heart Part 6 reaction. And we've also got a reaction here, courtesy of Rick Ross. So let's see what I'll go on. I want to see what Rick Ross is saying. And I want to get the... I want to get... I want to judge the climate of the this record based on what people are saying on Reddit as well. So let's let's pull this song one more one more time back. And let's play that bitch again because I, I like it. I don't know why people are saying it's trash. I think it's fucking hard. You guys are fucking you got you guys are spiraling. Not Kendrick spiraling. You guys are fucking spiraling if you think it's shit. I think it's hard. Oh, okay. So um, the, the 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 cover isn't a comment. The cover is day three leaving a message on Whitney's Instagram. The black heart. Okay, cool. Oof, bit sus, isn't it? I don't know how people feel about that. About your friends leaving heart emojis on under your girl's pictures. I'm not too sure what the protocol is on that sort of stuff. Especially with niggas. Pulitzer Prize winner is definitely spiraling. I got your fucking lines tapped, I swear that I'm dialed in. First I was a rat, so where's the proof of the trial then? Where's the paperwork of the cabinet is filed in? 1090 Jake would've took all the walls down. The streets would've had me hiding out in a small town. My Montreal connects stand up, not far down. The ones that you getting your stories from, they all clowns. I am a war general, season in preparation. My jacket is covered in medals, honor and yeah, that, that's true. What Jordan Ray is saying is true. Drake went from what's the, the hold up, get in the booth, to I know you got 10 more songs. Yeah, to be fair, the end bit is a bit sassy and a little bit unnecessary. But again, you have to read you have to read into what you have to kind of look into what Drake is saying a little bit deeper. From the beginning, I think Drake has always felt like Kendrick has got unfair amount of leeway and good grace from the public because he feels like Kendrick doesn't partake enough. He do, he's not he's not active enough. He's not in the dojo. He's not out here putting records and competing with all the youngsters. Like, Drake is out here having to compete with Yeats and the Destroy Lonelies and all this kind of kids, right? And he's kind of having to go record for record with these kids as they're in there fucking, as they're coming up. So I feel like Drake has always felt like Kendrick gets away with it. He doesn't have to do what he has to do to kind of keep himself relevant. So now they finally start beefing or not, you know, and, that, and then Kendrick along the way is always sniping and they're both kind of subbing each other. And then Drake releases a record and it takes Kendrick a while to respond. So in Drake said, he's like, look, now this guy has gone missing in the, in the heat of battle and people are still giving him, because that's the thing people don't remember. When Drake, when Kendrick was quiet, Kendrick fans were also quiet. They were making bare excuses for Kendrick. They were, oh no, it's already, blah, 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 whatever. And Drake was putting out records and still kind of being on his head top. Now Kendrick has finally stepped out. Everyone's kind of pretending like they weren't, you know, saying what they were saying previously. So I understand Drake's frustration. I just think it comes across a bit mad. It comes across a bit mad at the end because it sounds like he's angry that Kendrick's got a hit record and not like us. You can't be angry at that. Just drop another one on his head top. Do you know what I mean? But I think, you know, probably deep down, he probably doesn't think he deserves that level of attention. Maybe. But, you know, it's too late now. We're all looking. You know, it's one of them kind of things. And it kind of reminds me, I don't know, I get the feeling like deep down, this is a thing that I, people don't really understand this, but I think in beef, especially in rap beef, I think you actually have to hate the person. I don't honestly, this, this sounds odd, but I don't think Drake hates Kendrick as much as Kendrick hates Drake. So it's probably way harder to even like do it, you know? Kendrick has a lot more hate towards Drake because he hates him as a person, as a rapper, what he represents. He hates everything about the guy which is clear when you listen to the raps. That's why the raps hit so good. That's why it's so funny. Drake, I don't think, hates Kendrick as much as Kendrick hates Drake. Maybe he hates the fact that, again, he's not he's not active and he still gets prizes and he's awarded at the Grammys and he's lauded by the critics and shit because, for sure, Kendrick is more of a critic's choice, right? He's more of a media darling than maybe a, a Drake is. Cool. 
but I don't think he hates him as much. So probably he's finding it difficult to like muster up the energy to kind of go back and forth with him because like I don't really care about you. We're not in the same league. Do you know what I mean? Like it is what it is. You do your thing, I do my thing. But unfortunately now we're all outside. You know, that's the thing. It's like when it's like imagine like someone's about to start a fight with you, right? But you don't want to fight them. Then suddenly everyone starts opening their windows, pulling out their phones to record. You have to fight now because we're all watching. You can't walk away because if you walk away, you look like a pussy. So Drake has to has to squabble now. Unfortunately, he doesn't want to squabble, but he has to. Somebody put it on him. We're all watching now. We all have our phones out. So he has to fucking squabble. But I just don't think he wants to. He's not bothered. You know? That's just, that's just me. Dan P said, Ago, would you meet up a, 50, a 16-year-old fan? Would you take her out for dinner and other stuff? Of course I wouldn't. Why would I do? When did Drake take out a 16-year-old fan? What the fuck are you guys talking about? He took out a 16-year-old on a date. Drake's 16-year-old date. What? Who's this? What? Who's a, who's a 16-year-old girl that he took out? I see he took out... That girl's 18, Bella Harris. Again, not for me, but she's 18. That's not 16. Oh, here we go. Oh, what the fuck is this? Drake has actually been seeing his new girlfriend since she was 15 and fans are really uncomfortable. Excuse me? Who? Drake definitely has been in Toronto's favorite person as of late, which is for someone like Drake is a hard thing to achieve. After ditching his two scheduled appearances in the city as well as rescheduling two Toronto shows, he left a lot of fans annoyed as he came to the rest of his Scorpion tour. Though his knack for cancelling on Toronto isn't the only reason why Drake's left a sour taste in fans' mouths. Oh man, why are the guys behind the fucking paywall? Are you dumb? What? A 6 2? Let's see this shit. What are these guys talking about here? Surely not my guy. Surely not. He dated this Bella Harris girl when she was 15. When the fuck did that Why did, How did I miss that news? Hold on. No way. Okay, let's go. Let's see this one. So let's see this Vice article. So let's cut, let's cut right to the chase. Drake is reportedly dating a teenager. The 41-year-old rapper who has been often linked with more age-appropriate women, including Jennifer Lopez, was recently seen dining with 18-year-old model Bella Harris in Washington, D.C., according to Page Six. A photo of Harris' Instagram feed shows the pair embracing somewhat awkwardly, Drake giving up a handsy uncle with a caption, No place I'd rather... <laughs> no place I'd rather be, you know? Oh... <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, okay. Um, hmm. Maybe that's his cousin, though. Maybe that's like a cousin. Maybe that's like a family friend. Maybe that's a he's meant. It's a mentor thing, right? That's what you do when you mentor girls, right? You 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 go eye. You you you're like eyelid to eyelid, right? You're like cheek to forehead. That's what you do when you're when you're mentoring somebody. You know what I mean? You go like lower hand you know, at the spine on the back and you pull them into your fucking, pull them in. That's what you do when you're mentoring. You pull them in like that, eh? That's what you do when you're mentoring. You pull them in, bro. Oh, sorry, I haven't got a screen. My bad, my bad. Sorry, 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 sorry. You pull them in when you got a screen. There we go. This one, right? You pull them in when you got them on the, on that. that's what you do with it. Yeah? We've all, we've all taken pictures like this with our nieces and with our nieces, right? We've all taken pictures like this with our cousins, right? With our family friends, right? We've all done this before, haven't we? We've all been this close. I eyeball to eyeball, right? Cheek to forehead. We've all been this close to our family relatives, right? Especially when they happen to be super attractive model looking girls. This is this makes complete sense, doesn't it? This is perfectly fine. I don't see anything wrong with this. Um, the 31 year old rapper has often been linked to the more age appropriate women including Jennifer Lopez was recently seen dining with the 18 year old model oh yeah didn't Drake smash ben Jennifer Lopez allegedly shit he's got a mad record uh, Bella Harris in Washington DC a photo on Instagram da, da, da. it appears that the pair initially met when she attended Drake and Future's summer 16 <sighs> 
Summer 16 tour in t- <laughs> Summer 16 tour is fuck now looking at it. The Summer 16 tour <laughs> sounds fucking insane. Summer 16. I bet. I bet Crystalia was there. I bet Crystalia was there, innit? Summer 16 tour. I bet Crystalia was there. I bet Crystalia was a VIP. Um, which is oddly poetic because it would have been 16 at the time if we're doing the math right. Six fucking teen. Harris also posted an Instagram photo of the American Music Awards later that year. Congratulations. Yay. Drake, sorry. Harris, daughter of legendary music producer Jimmy Jam, is a model who recently graduated from high school. So she's a model and also has a father that works in music. I don't think that's that crazy. I could see Drake meeting her because of her dad and then just being friendly with her. I don't think this is that deep. I know it looks mad, but I don't think it's that deep. I'm not going to lie. I don't think it's that deep. I swear to God. Maybe, maybe I'm fucking capping. But I don't think it's that deep. Let's go to her Instagram. Who's who? Who's Bella Harris? I never heard of a Bella Harris. Who's who's the fuck's a Bella Harris? So she's not sixteen anymore by the looks of the of the pictures. But God damn it, Drake. Let's see. Bella Harris, Bella B, hundred two thousand followers. Standard model account, you know, hot girl shit everywhere. She got the tatters out in one picture here. So yeah, standard hot girl shit. So how old is she now? She was 16. So what is she now? Like early 20s probably? Because I think when that article was written, she's 18. So now she's probably like early 20s, I'm assuming. So that's the that's the thing with that's the thing with this age shit, right? So when she's six, when she's 18 and he's allegedly seeing her, it's weird. Now that she's mid twenties, but still looks the same, what is it okay now? Age thing is odd because what's Drake like? Thirty seven, thirty eight. How how old is Drake? How old is Drake? Is he like thirty eight, thirty seven? So if she's like twenty five, he's more than ten years older than her, but still she's twenty five years old, isn't it? It's not for me. I wouldn't necessarily date a twenty five year old, but. You know, these are rock stars, pop star guys. It's a bit different with these guys. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I'd, I'm not going to lie. In the long and short of it, when it comes to relationships, especially if someone's of age, I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to lie. I really don't. I think time should be best spent actually focusing on legit pedos. Um, is it a bit weird? Yeah. Would I personally do it? Nah. But am I going to fucking go in the street and protest? Probably not. And again, he's the, as he says in the raps, Drake's a big star. If he legitimately was a PDF, yeah, you know I mean, people would be pr- protesting outside of his raves, so outside of his fucking concerts, he'd be getting cancelled left, right, and centre. There's no way he could get away with it. So I don't really buy too much into that sort of stuff. I'm not gonna lie. I know it sounds a bit wild, but I don't really buy into it too tough. Um, let's hear the Rick Ross response. What's Rick Ross saying? Oh, Rick Ross re- replied in the IG on a on a vi- random IG video. Rick Ross reply. Let's see what IG's Rick Ross is saying. Big up the hip hop heads and what do you call it? Reddit for posting this. Drake, sorry, Rick Ross responds to Drake's this via his IG story. What are you saying here? We just heard that new BBL Drizzy, the diss, the bomb. I hold your head up, cut it off like Rick Ross and hold it up. Himalaya, Anastasia, Fantasia. <laughs> <laughs> Cupcake, man. Looking bad. Looking bad, man. Fantasia, you might as well go on Maury Povich and tell your story. Go to Maury Povich. <laughs> He's such a gun. Malaysia, Fantasia. Rick Ross is such a gun. Rick Ross is such a gun. Malaysia Fantasia I had to cut that shit off <laughs> Oh Alright alright So so the rappers So the fans are saying it's, it's mid The rappers are saying it's mid But then again Rick Ross is also compromised Because he doesn't like Drake anymore Oh that's fucking hilarious Fantasia Malaysia <laughs> One more time That was hilarious <laughs> We just heard that new BBL Drizzy. Baby, the Drizzy. diss, the bomb. I hold your head up, cut it off like Rick Ross and hold it up. 
<laughs> Himalaya. <laughs> Anastasia, Anastasia, Anastasia. Cupcake, man, you looking bad. You looking bad, man. You might as well go on Maury Povich and tell your story. Go to Maury Povich. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that's some rich guy shit in it. I want to be rich like that one day. Rick Ross is on a boat at the dead of night. What's that? Probably Sunday night. Monday morning, he's just on a boat. He's on a yacht somewhere. Where the fuck's Rick, Rick, Rick Ross going on a boat on a Monday? What the fuck's he doing on a Monday on a boat? What a good fucking life, man. <laughs> Fantasia, Malaysia. Anast- <laughs> that was really funny. <sighs> and again, an- another reply from Rick Ross. What's the other reply now? Another fucking reply. Oh my God, man. Non-stop. Anastasia, Malaysia. Oh, let's see what he says here. Another, another one. I just want to make this clear. White boy, they said you said if you was fucking young girls, you promised you would have been arrested. Whoever wrote that for you should have put more thought into that. White boy, I'm, it's your writers. Whatever message you translated to them, that wasn't the way they were supposed to do that. And as a writer, when it come to pedophilia, you gotta remove yourself from that. White boy, that wasn't the, the line right there. Tapped out, so we celebrating tonight. White boy tapped out. <laughs> <laughs> that boy denying pedophilia, but we finna ball tonight. We going up. You already see what it is. 305 in my yayo, double MG. We got a huge announcement coming. Nino Breeze, what it do, nigga? We love you. One time for all the real niggas worldwide. Make sure y'all holding those Luke Bell Air bottles up. One time for all the family in Africa. Hey, white boy, I hear you. You, you bowing out. It's obvious. You can't take it. You know ain't nobody playing a song about pedophilia, defending pedophilia in the club. We don't do that. But this ain't over the Ricky Rose. Say, say it's over. Cause you tapping out, you tapping out, you know everybody see it. But, like I said, we finna party tonight and it ain't over till the boss says so, you hear me? Listen, we keeping Drake away from the car show cause the kids are welcome. <laughs> Nobody with that background, no, shall be allowed <laughs> on the promised land premises. <laughs> He's such a gun. <laughs> <laughs> we keep it drink away from the car because <laughs> kids are alive. <laughs> oh, he's such a prick, man. Oh! oh, man. Yo, big up Mark Yell. Big up Mark Yeller. Big up Mark Yeller, brother. Salute, salute, my guy. Salute, my guy. Godspeed, safe journey on the fucking old bussy bus. You feel me? Hold on tight, motherfucker. There's no seatbelts on that shit. You got to hold on to the poles. That's what you do on the bus. You got to hold on to the fucking poles. No seatbelts. You got to hold on to the seat in front of you and hope nothing crazy happens. But big up, Mark Yellow. Appreciate you, brother. Um, Yeah. I personally like the record. Everyone else saying they don't like it. I personally like it. I know the comments aren't too favorable, but I like it. Um, I think Drake did his ting. I think Drake did his ting. But hey, what do I know? What do I know? Any more updates here? We haven't got any more updates, have we? So we heard we heard what Drake said. We heard what Ricky Ross said. Any more updates regarding the beef? Nothing else, in it? BBL Drizzy, who's that? I don't know who that is. This beef is basically the prestige. What's that mean? Uh, what is happening here? Actually, let me see the comments via the, about the Drake thing. I want to see. What's the, what's the Drake thing? Let's see what the leaks are. What people are saying on the Reddit about the Drake response. What what's the response been like? Uh, let's see. Yeah, exactly. We got the first one. This whole beef has been a revival of this once dead sub. Exactly, exactly. The sub, the hip hop head sub is back. It went for a bit of a lull, but now it's back. Exactly. Um, twenty minutes after academics start streaming, LMAO. The most insane week in hip-hop history, true. 
Bro lost the fun tone from Family Matters. Not even mad tones. This dude on some sad tones. I don't even want to diss you anymore. Laying the ground for him bowing up because he feels bad for Dot being molested. Which is genius over here. Completely misinterpreted too. Oh, okay, cool. Mother I, so I Sober um, is a pretty explicably not about Drake being molested. It's from the Genius page. Oh, Mother I Sober is, pre is pretty explicitly not about Kendrick. So that bar that Ked Drake was using about Mother I, Mother I, Mother I is actually not about him. So Drake misinterpreted the Kendrick bar. Whoa. Okay. So I guess they're one for one when it comes to misinformation, right? Drake thought he had he had a, a bomb there, but it's not true. This mom, my mom came over today and I was like, Mother I, Mother I, oh, wait a second. That's one record where you say you got molested. Oh, fuck me. I just made the whole connection. This is about to get desperate. This is about to get so depressing. This is that trauma from your own confessions. This is when your father leave you home alone with no protection. So neglected. That's why these pedophile raps is shit you're obsessed with. It's so excessive. Okay. They're saying that has nothing to do with Kendrick. As a child, Kendrick's mother often asked him if his cousin had touched him inappropriately. Kendrick makes it clear that no was an honest one, but the constant questioning in um, itself felt traumatized him. It's later revealed that his mother's instances of knowing the truth was because she was sexually assaulted herself. Oh, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Um, we need to, we, 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 we need to do a song about how we totally don't diddle kids. <laughs> He said, nah, Kenny, I'm too famous to do the okay. <laughs> okay, now I see what people are saying now. That's what Rick Ross is saying. Your defense can't be, if I, if I did it, I would be arrested. But what else are you meant to say, though? If somebody accuses you of diddling and you're Drake, what else you meant to say? I didn't do it. Okay, I didn't do it. You guys still won't believe me anyway. So I'll just say the obvious thing is like, come on, it's Drake. If I really, would, if I really did this thing, I would have got arrested. Which sounds kind of wild because I wouldn't have said that. If somebody accused me of grape, I'm saying I didn't do it. I wasn't there. I'll, I'll, I'll put, I'll get whatever evidence I've got to show I was in another location or whatever. I'll provide whatever evidence I can to provide that I didn't do what they said I did. But would I say, oh, I'm a famous person. I wouldn't have done that because it ruined my career. It's like, what? What kind of defense is that? Huh? So, okay. Now I get how people are looking a bit funny. I understand. I guess Diddy and Epstein were too. Um, Denzel Curry's response. What did he say? What did Denzel Curry say? What, what's Denzel Curry's response? Why Why people listen to Denzel Curry? Because he's a good rapper as well, I guess. Because Denzel Curry's a very proficient with the raps too. People are suggesting Denzel Curry knows what he's talking about. That's what the fuck you go with? Stop. Ah, okay. Everyone say the same thing. Dude, trust me. Look, look, at, the, look at the first comment. <laughs> Denzel Curry wasn't a fan of Drake's reply. That's what you go with. Stop. The first reply. Saying I'm not a pedo, I'm too famous for that, and then laughing at him being molested got to be the worst spin for a diss record I've ever seen. Oh, no. People are saying Drake didn't do well. Damn. Kendrick definitely about to drop in 20, 30 minutes. Um, Millie's name invoked a couple of times in this beef. If he comes in hot on a Metro beat, spitting bars with Dot and receipts, I'm removing every Drax single I have on my Spotify. Kendrick fit in to drop in 30 minutes. Drake on Insta. And we know you're dropping six minutes after, so instead of posting my address, you have a lot to address. Bro really said I expect you to take the Espin angle. Bro, that's not a good thing. Yeah, exactly. Bro really said I expected you to take the Epstein angle. Bro, that's not a good thing. <laughs> So you recorded a whole music video for Family Matters, but ain't recorded nothing for feeding Kendrick information about Double Agent. Oh, well, okay. Man couldn't even understand the lyrics to Mother Eyes Sober. <laughs> I think he misunderstood. Oh, so they're saying Drake completely misunderstood Mr. Morale. I think he misunderstood Mr. Morale as a whole. Every time he takes a shot at Kendrick with something, that album, he, he never talks about it in the right context. Fabricate sort of the family front because you heard Mr. Morale. So, but Mr. Morale was about him coming to, it's about Kendrick coming to terms of being a flawed human being. And Drake's now taking it as like, what? He's, a, I don't know. I don't know. Bro, what is this? He literally just said, he's just too famous to be fucking young girls. Is this man for real? Did Drake just say the only reason Kendrick is calling him out for being a pedo is because Kendrick got sexual assault when he was a father left? <laughs> Dude literally says, this is why you're invested in pedophile shit. What the fuck? 
If I was assaulted, I would want victims to come out and express those abuses. Man's literally telling him his words don't matter because he's been through it. Kendrick, you fell for my trap. Make an entire work for Kama Peter. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> ah, this comment is fucking brutal. Kendrick, you fell for my trap. Making the entire world think I'm a pedophile. Ah, oh, Drake, bro. What happened, man? Oh, what happened? What happened? Damn it. Yeah, you guys in the chat were right. You guys in the chat were right. I still like the record, but you guys in the chat were right. And to be fair, the internet never lies. The dislike ratio is kind of wild for a Drake record, right? It's kind of wild, the dislike ratio. And the comments are frying him up. They're frying him up on here. Let's actually, let's actually, let's actually write Drake. Let's, do, let's, let's see what people are saying about Drake. Let's see on a, on a trending comments. Let's see what people are saying. Niggas finally seeing Drake ain't that special of a rapper. Drake only path to victory at this point. Wow. So yeah, the tre the trending, even the trending are saying it. What's this? What's this about? What's this? I prayed for this and it happened. <laughs> okay. I prayed for Drake's only path to victory. Now I gotta pull up. Everybody dying, me included. I ain't going to jail. <laughs> now I gotta pull up. Everybody dying, me included. I ain't going to Drake is a creep. Drake, I never did anything with Millie Bobby Brown. Everybody with a brain. Whoa, what's everybody brain? What's jail. What's now I gotta pull up. Every what's this? Everybody with a brain. What happened here? Damn, Drake really might be a sex trafficking pedophile. <laughs> what? Kendrick in the booth preparing the final diss track to end Drake. <laughs> oh man, my guy, man. What well one for my guy? I don't like this, man. Drake drops a heart part six, everyone. Uh, my computer's getting a bit fuggity fuck fuck fuck. What's it say? Everyone what? Certified. Oh. Certified lover boy, certified pedophiles. Wop, 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 wop. Dad, fuck them up. Wop, 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 wop. I'ma do my stuff. Certified. <laughs> certified lover boy, certified pedophile. Oh, Kendrick. <clears throat> Drake is a pedophile. Drake. I never touched Millie Bobby Brown. Everyone. <laughs> Kendrick called Drake a pedo and the first thing Drake does is name drop an alleged victim. You might need to be a bit smarter than that. <laughs> you might need to Whether you believe it or not, Drake's response is a masterclass in this shit. This is the way, the only way to respond, and he did it beautifully. What a track, the ominous sound of it. I got a cha, like a twist in the movie. Kendrick, do you like teenagers? Drake. When you say teenage, how are we talking? <laughs> Girls who are teenagers. When you say teenage, how are we talking? <laughs> Girls who are teenagers. When you say teen Live footage of Drake fans that are on Twitter saying he's winning the battle. Are you gay? Yes, I am. <laughs> are you gay? Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. Are you gay? Yep. Are you gay? Yes, I am. You? Yes. Are you gay? Yes. Are you gay? Having a good time? Yes. You... Drake's whole 10 year identity dismantled by a catchy phrase on an instrumental is diabolical. You cannot make this up. <laughs> the Kendrick. The Drake and Kendrick beef in a nutshell. Storyka. 
I'm impressed. Where do you want to die? I'll honor any request, Kendrick says. Wow. Me in 2058 showing my grandkids a timeline of the epic Drake beef. That's history. Right now. Okay. Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't buy it. I don't buy it still. I don't think it's that bad. Let's continue with the Reddit. This most offensive disc record I've ever heard. Uh, I don't get it. If the dual allegations are false, why didn't he just wait to drop the bomb instead of running to TMZ and IG to first? Yeah, if he really fed that info, why would he take track? Yeah, exactly. Not IG story already. Hmm. Top comment on YouTube. This is really going to untouch those kids. Really? Is that what someone says? In the in the comments. I actually, I didn't check the actual comments of the, of the record. What did I say? This beef will be generational. Who else want to bet Kendrick is about to drop a response in an hour? Ah, you fell for my greatest gambit. I merely wanted you to think I was a pedophile. Like, Drake is twirling his mustache, pretending to be some Machiavellian Bond villain with that one, LMAO. I don't want to diss you anymore, question mark. Whoever wrote that is the rap for sure. This whole beef has been the best part of 2024. This is going to make a movie about this. Kendrick going to drop before I'm done listening. For the next few months, Drake ain't going to hear nothing else other than probably a minor and OVO ho at every club. This is sad, man. Why is Drake ending his own career? Now it makes more sense the line of the actor we once knew is looking paranoid. Kendrick's about to drop in 45 seconds. Haha, ha, I expected you to call me a pedophile. Is a wild position to take. Drake the type of guy to say, Kendrick can't kill me, I kill myself. Before making this. <laughs> Do not diddle kids from Always Sunny Part 2. J. Cole in Switzerland, sun, sun gazing and smiling. Um, flor Floribunda roses. Um, bros slid a white flag in there and thought we wouldn't notice. I don't want to diss you anymore. Drake with the most anticlimactic bars of 2024. We step into 2025 listening to Not Like Us. At least we know the ghostwriters are gone. Kendrick about to drop. I never looked twice at no teenager. Motherfucker, they got you on camera multiple times. <laughs> okay. Drake and Kendrick, you from... You form a beautiful duo uh, together. You know what's not a defense for pedo allegations? Calling your accuser a victim. That Drake thinks that somehow got your moment confirms everything Dre said about him. Kendrick, you're a liar and a manipulator. Drake, I lied and manipulated. <laughs> Telling someone to fact check, then not fact check yourself is something else. Drake titled The Heart Six. Kendrick, 24 hours later. He a fan, he a fan, he a fan. I'd never look at teenager twice. We look twice at those lyrics. I want you to believe I was a pedo. I want you to believe that I don't take care of my kids. You see how stupid that sounds, dog? The rabbit hole still is dug deep. I go further, I promise. Meet the Grahams is played in A minor when Kendrick said, I'm about to t I'm about to up the score. Not like us is played in B minor. It's just genius work. Bros are Pulitzer for a reason. Ah, Kendrick and you fool. I actually wanted everyone to party on Cinco de Mayo and rap about pedo allegations over BBL beat. Okay, so everyone thinks Drake lost. I don't really agree. I don't actually agree, but everyone thinks Drake lost. Fuck. Oh, Drake sounds so defeated, he probably had some sleepless nights. At this point, his whole collab album between Drake and Kendrick. But Drake is trying so hard to get around his allegations smoothly. It ain't happening. Drake sounds like he's giving defense to the judge. I'm just waiting for Kendrick to drop again. Bro sounds guilty as fuck. I don't have sexual relations with that A minor, Mr. Lamar. Okay. People are not happy with the Drake response. People are not happy with the Drake response. I think it's decent. Is it a, is it a fucking career ender? Probably not. But I think it's good. But people don't seem to like it. I might be the only person in the fucking internet that thinks it's a decent reply. I might be the only person in the... On the internet who thinks it's a fucking decent reply. I'm the only person I think so. Who thinks it's a fucking decent reply. God damn, man. Academic says he's been trying to say Drake planted fake evidence Kendrick was using. But Kendrick would end up drop dropping every time he went on stream. Well, yeah. Let's see what Ken... What's Academic saying? 
Drake. Da, 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 da. Yeah, big up, big up the chat. Big up everybody in the chat. I appreciate all of you. Big up Daniel Clements. Appreciate you too for joining my friend. Everyone else in the chat. If you're liking it, make sure you like the stream, please. Um, let's see. Uh, what else is going on here? Bubbity bubbity ba. Oh really? What's Tom Brady saying about about fucking Kim Kardashian? What do he say? Kim Kardashian. Thank you so much for being here. I know Kim was terrified to be here tonight. Not because of this, but because her kids are home with their dad. Kim Kardashian, thank you so much for being here. Kevin Hart roasted Tom Brady. What, what did Kevin Hart say? We're done. Tomatum. Giselle said, you retire or we're done. That's what she said to you, Tom. You retire or we're done. But let me tell you something. When you got a chance to go eight and nine and all it will cost you is your wife and your kids, <laughs> you got to do what the fuck you got to do. You understand me? <laughs> yeah. You got to do it. You got to do it. You know what that's called, Tom? You know what that's called? That's called real nigga shit. <laughs> yeah, Tom. Fuck them kids. <laughs> fuck them kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck them you kids. Asked me to come here, bitch. I told you what I was gonna do. <laughs> Fuck them uh, kids. It's also a good time to say, man, I love the fact that you and Giselle are finding a way to co-parent and still keep it together, man. Giselle is actually here supporting you tonight, but just in full transparency, uh, she came as Antonio Brown's plus one. How does that? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What did I say? What did I say? I'm just here to have a good time. Before you can get comfortable, you gotta get uncomfortable. I'm removing the discomfort from this room. Speaking, speaking of discomfort, let's talk about Bill Belichick for a second. Um, Tom, it's, it's just a good segue, man. You know. The world knows that you left Bill Belichick high and dry, man. You left him, and then you went to Tampa, and you won a championship. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Holy shit. You left Bill Belichick with Mac Jones. God damn. <laughs> oh, you fucked him. <clears throat> you fucked him good. <laughs> you did. You did, Tom. You fucked your coach. But let me tell you something, people. Let me tell you something. That's what you got to do to maintain your happiness. You understand? <laughs> You sometimes got to fuck your coach. You know who else fucked their coach? <laughs> Giselle. She that <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Wow. Kevin Hart. Kevin fucking Hart. Kevin fucking Hart. Kevin fucking Hart. Yo. He came through with the fucking fire. <laughs> you know who else? I saw Andrew Schultz there as well, by the way. Fucking hell. That was fucking great. Oh, what did Metro, Metro reacts? Hits a huge free to cut lead down to 42. Okay, cool. Kendra Ma, you are on the clock. Lows. Uh... Gilly the Kid says Drake won. What did Gilly, I don't. I don't care about Gilly the Kid. He's always talking shit. What did he say here? He's trying, is he glazing? Shit, shit over with, man. It's over with. Light skin niggas won. They won. They, they took that shit, man. Is that shit over with, man? That shit is over with. <laughs> I go on. Kendrick came back. And then he came back again. I said, Oh, he barbecued big. Honey dip glazed obey season the light skin niggas <laughs> <didn't trade. laughs> It's over. The light skin niggas won, man. That shit over. It's over. It's over. Lame, lame, lame. All these old niggas talking shit. Lame. Lame, 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 lame. Anything. 
you play for a week. The, the, okay, cool. Nothing else is here. New stuff, by the way. Um, cool. Let's move on then. Let's fucking move on. Let's fucking move on. So, um, that's all done. For the most part, I enjoyed the disc record, um, courtesy of Drake. I fucking liked it. I really did enjoy it. I know some people didn't enjoy it, but I fucking did. I thought it was pretty decent, disc record for me, personally. I thought it was pretty decent. Some people didn't like it, personally. I actually did like it. I actually did fucking like it. Um, anyway, moving on. Quick one before I head to the gym. I'm going to go to the gym and obviously start my fucking work day. So, gym and then work today. The rest of you guys, if you're out there also gymming or working right now, I feel you. I feel your fucking pain. It's hard out here for a fucking nigger. But we have to keep on going. We have to keep on striving. So, let's do one more before I move on. One more. One more before I move on. Um, what do we got to do here? Da, 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 da. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. One more before we move on. One more. Let's go to Let's go to Gorum. Let's go to Gorum. Let's let's switch to some fashion shit. So um Gorum Vasilia, right? You know who Gorum Vasilia is, right? Gorum Vasilia is the what you call it? Used to is what is basically now head of is taken over for a Vetema. He's Demna's brother. Demna at Balenciaga. Demna started Vetema with his brother. Brother's mostly a business guy, but he's now switched to being more of the design fashion side of things. He took over a Vetema. So he'd been doing some press and some corny PR with Doja Cat walking around and buying shit. She's dressed up in this like, you know, um cellophane cling film outfit type of vibe going on. They went to Foot Locker, they went to fucking McDonald's to eat and shit. They had a good time out there, right? They have it, or they're having a good time. And it's interesting because Gorum is at like the less talented of the brothers, I think personally. Vetemar isn't as good as it once was. Um, and he's clearly the most fash he's clearly the most fame obsessed. He's way more fame obsessed than Demna, even though he's got less talent. So here they are walking around the streets. Gorum is dressed like, you know, like a goon basically, which is really cringe. Um, and here they are doing their thing. And I'm assuming Goran Vasilia has dressed Doja Cat as well. She's wearing this cellophane stuff, the heels with her toes hanging out, looking bad. You could tell Doja is like, you know, not really with it, in it? Because look at the feet. She doesn't even moisturize her feet. They're so dry here. Come on, baby girl. you got to apply some moisturizers to the feet at least. If you're going to have your feet all splayed out over the heels, you got to apply some moisturizer. They look so dry. And then, of course, there's a picture of them again in Foot Locker buying some things. So, yeah, I guess it is what it is. Um, I'm assuming Doja Cat's going to be at Met Gala. Most likely, Doja Cat is going to be wearing a Vetemont piece at the Met Gala. I think that's going to be the case. But, yeah, man, um, Gorham is out here trying to cosplay as a rapper, trying to cosplay as black or maybe it's a wigger thing. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but there he is enjoying life. Fair play. Fair play. I don't know if he's actually gay, though. That's the thing I'm thinking. Is he actually... I know Demna is. I don't know if they're if both brothers are, though. Maybe they are. Maybe they're not. It doesn't matter. Either way, um, we're going to see Demna. We're going to see, sorry, uh, Doja Cat in Vetemont probably very, very soon uh, for the Met Gala. But, yeah, the pictures are what they are. A little bit corny. You know, calling a press on yourself to take these horrible pat pictures is whatever. You know, whatever. Who gives a fuck? Um... I'm not really interested to see a Vetemar Met Gala look anyway. It's either going to be a lot of like nakedness or it's going to be a lot of over exaggerated, you know, super overused fucking cloth everywhere. Next on the list, we've got this courtesy of Stay Grounded TV. It features Angela Reese talking about why she decided to go with Reebok over Nike. I like this girl. I wanted to be a priority because I could have signed easily with Nike. I could have signed easily with Jordan, but like everybody doing that. Like, Y'all know I don't like doing what everybody do. I like to do the complete opposite. I'm bringing Reebok back, yeah. And I wanted to be a part. I like that, you know. I'm not going to lie. I really like that. Um, Reebok is struggling at the moment, especially performance wear. I think lifestyle-wise, they're all right. But even lifestyle-wise, you know, because I think performance does bleed into lifestyle. It's a good idea that she decided to sign with Reebok instead of signing with Nike or Jordan Brand. Um, as she said, she'll definitely be a priority. Um, women's NBA isn't that popular, but these girls, her and Catelyn Clark, are really helping to kind of bring it back into some level of prominence. Why not capitalize on all that attention? 
why not capitalize on all that hype at the moment and try and parlay it into some, you know, into maybe bringing a brand back and probably get a better deal for yourself. She probably gets better splits. You'll probably get better fee, whatever. You might get a board on this on you might get a seat on a board further down the line if you prove your worth. Like there's you know, there's a lot of um room to grow and become very successful. And also because the athlete's career is super short, make some real bread. She can make some real big money if she does um do what she thinks she's gonna do and bring Reebok back in some substantial way. Um it's gonna be interesting to see because I can't think of the last time a female athlete professional athlete crossed over in that way in terms of culture wise right maybe serena williams back in the day but i can't think of another one that crossed because that's the thing with her she's gonna need to do this in the sportswear lane but have it kind of be you know received by everybody that's a very hard thing to do it's not easy to be able to make a shoe or to make a clothing range that everybody's gonna like across the board um, especially when you're kind of new and people don't really know much about you, really. Um, especially with it being women's NBA and, you know, you guys in the States don't seem to care about women's NBA at all. Um, it seems to be... I feel like women's NBA is only covered on social media. But I feel like outside of that, you guys really don't give a fuck about it. So let's see. If they can get attendance up, like, it'll be sick if her and that Kathleen, Caitlin Clark girl could get attendance up with people watching NBA and also people buying the shit that these girls fucking put out. That's going to be fucking wild. Um, so they might end up making loads of money. They might be the opposite of NBA players who make all their money mostly playing. They might be the first. They might make all their money outside of the NBA. That's actually a pretty cool little situation. So many different shoe companies wanted to work with me that I chose Reebok. What was it about Reebok? One, they didn't have a woman, a basketball player, a, bas a woman's basketball player, mm. a face. Mm. So I wanted to be that. Mm-hmm. Two, Shaq, you know, my relationship with Shaq. Mm. And three, I like how they were rebranding everything. And they're, like, <laughs> letting me be um, the creative behind, like, everything I want to do. So, like, I'm having my own shoe line coming out. Merch. Mm, when do you want it? By the way. Um, um, that y'all can be able mm. to shop and, like, mm. stop to our age. Like, mm -hmm. y'all like what I wear. Y'all like how I dress. Mm -hmm. Y'all like my style. So, like, I wanted to incorporate that into Reebok. Nice. I want people wearing my shoes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have shoes probably in a couple years. Good girl. My own shoe. Good girl. Maybe like two years. Once I'm in the league, like, in hooping and stuff. So, good girl. Yeah. Good girl. Um, I hope she does the right thing and links up with a good designer. Hope she doesn't try and make it all herself. I think if she has, obviously, she maybe has the vision behind it. But I hope she, has, she gets the time to sit down with a proper good design team and put together a proper sick collection of shoes. That would be pretty cool. I'm hoping it's just not something that she kind of drummed up herself. But all in all, I like it. Um, I'm liking what she's doing. I like how she's going. And again, it's another example of like, I quite like this Gen Z. I, I like this younger generation. I'm not going to lie. They're a lot more independent than we were coming up. My, my generation, millennials and shit. Because I feel like these kids, they don't necessarily, they're not as like mesmerized or as like hypnotized by big brands. If that was me and I was her and Jordan Brand or Nike came up to me, I'd be shaking. I'd faint. I'd sign on a dotted line for peanuts. But these kids don't care about that. They want ownership. They want autonomy. They want, like, their own thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if she came out with her own shoe within a year, even sooner. It wouldn't surprise me if she decided to be independent and do her own thing. These kids nowadays don't really, they're not that mesmerized or, like, you know, duped by these big brands anymore. You have to really try and sell them a lot to kind of get them on board. So I like that they're fiercely independent like that. I, got, I, I can't lie. I fucking love how fiercely independent they are and they do their own thing. They don't give a fuck. You got to bring way more to them to the table for them to fucking agree to start on a dotted line. And I guess with Reebok being where they are, especially performance wise, I feel like this is a fucking great deal. Honestly, big up Gen Z's, man. Big up Gen, Gen Z's. Um, they're not as gassed as my generation were. My generation, honestly, we would have been so gassed having Nike come to you and offer you a fucking deal and just taking shitty fucking percentages, shitty fees. But I feel like this younger generation, you need a lot more. You're not going to just get them to sign on because it's a cool brand, you know, which, which makes it interesting for the other shoe companies. They have a chance now because these kids will sign, you know, you could, I could see a kid signing for ASICs in basketball like hey assets give me better splits they allow me to have a shoe in a in a short time period um they're giving me a seat on the board when i retire like i'm i can see a kid signing with assets new balance you know puma 
all these brands before they sign with the Adidas or a Nike, the big brand or the Jordan brand. You know what I mean? Because it's way more ownership in that regard. So big up to fucking Angel Reese. I fucking love it. Talking about Asics. Talking about Asics. Kiko Kostadinov has a new pair of Asics out at the moment. And I love these. I'm going to have to come around to them. I've been a bit of a Kiko hater. I'm not going to lie. In secret. I've been a secret Kiko hater. Mostly because back in the day, I remember that Kiko used to be a big hater of Virgil. I'm not too sure if it was jealousy because he was coming up at the time and wasn't really as well known as he is now. Maybe he was angling for a big fashion job and he felt overlooked or he just didn't rate Virgil's designs. But Kiko used to say a lot of snarky things about Virgil in his stories. I wish I saved some of them back in the day, but Kiko was a bit of a cunt to Virgil back in the day. He never had a good thing to say about a guy. And, you know, with him looking the way he does and me looking the way I do, I for one minute assumed it was a racismo thing which obviously I don't think is the case. It probably just is a him just not rating Virgil's design. So I kind of hated Kiko from a distance because he hated Virgil. But now time has passed on and obviously he's kind of shut his mouth when it comes to Virgil. He doesn't really talk about him anymore and he's obviously way up. Um, he's got his own brand. You know, he's got fucking ready to wear women's and men's. He opened a new store. He's got this fucking line with Asics that he does and shit. Everything's fucking looking rosy. So maybe that's why you're not really hearing much from him. But the output is the output. And the stuff he does with Asics, I have to confess, I think he might be the reason why Asics has come back. As much as all these girls, because you see these girls on out, out and about, which is really odd, right? There's this contingent of females outside who wear athleisure, but don't go to the gym. I'm sure some of you guys have seen it. I've only realized it recently because I, I thought they were all going to the gym. But this outfit that all the girls wear, right? Uh, girls, athle is it athleisure? It's like an af it's athleisure look where they wear the naught face and the tights with the socks and the Asics trainers. I'm sure some of you guys have seen that style, that trend of all the girls wearing this. It's just basically, it's this outfit that Hailey Bieber kind of popularized, right? You got the bomber jacket, the tights and the socks and you wear the running shoes with it. I thought they were going to the gym. So these girls dress like this, just walking around. This is like a new pajama look. I didn't know these girls aren't actually going to the gym. But a lot of these girls like to wear ASICs when they wear this, right? You see her wearing burgers and stuff. So at first, I thought these girls are the ones that brought back ASICs. But I don't think so. I think Kiko has a lot more to do with ASICs coming back. I think in terms of like a core streetwear sneaker scene thing, he brought them back and then obviously it popped to the zeitgeist and everyone's wearing them. But I think you have to give Kiko credit for bringing Asics back because these are fucking hard. This is an Asics Gel Quantum Zion. Honestly, the names for the Asics are fucking horrible. I'm not going to lie. I don't like how they have so many words. The names are necessary. So it's the Kiko Kostadinov Asics Gel Quantum Zion, Zion, Zion Zia Nyx colorway. Like what? How many words do you need in a fucking shoe? But regardless, however many words they give, fucking beautiful. It's in the Knicks colorway. You've got orange, blue, and the whites. You've got a nice mix here of leathers and mesh on the upper. You've got this really lovely orange, floaty, cloudy sole thing going on that looks fucking gorgeous. It almost looks like marmalade, like jelly or something. I'm not too sure if that means it's going to be really soft on the feet. But either way, it looks fucking gorgeous. You've got this incredible almost like a plasticky web i think is it plastic or is that mesh i'm not too sure but it's like a cage thing on the middle here on the middle section and then there's, diff there's two different types of mesh there's a mesh with the bigger holes and mesh with smaller holes there's this kind of grated um thing at the top here i like the metal eyelets too that helps to kind of keep the eyelets somewhat um stern and doesn't make, make them rip there's concealed lacing here at the top here so you can't see them um exposed lacing here at the top you've got this nice orange lining they look really fucking beautiful. I'd wear the fuck out of these shoes. So I really fucking like these. What's the blurb saying? 2024 sees the Asics Gel Quantum Zion Zia by Kiko Kostadinov come in full force. The silhouette originally debuted in black and royal blue colorway has soon become a popular Kiko design model. The shoe features a 2021 Gel Quantum Leverick cushioning unit. Okay, so it's taken a unit from one shoe and put it on another shoe. I love that. Um, cushioning unit to add the comfort and take into Instagram. The Bulgarian designer has revealed that the coming um, up and coming silhouette for the Asics Gel Quantum Zion Zia takes on the next colorway scheme. At the end of the last month, the designer revealed the new colorway which takes on the white mesh upper the orange hits the inner and the asics monitor kind of tongue um look out for kiko kasadinov gel quantum zion zia next slated to release may 10th 
So due to come out May 10th, they look fucking hard. I don't gonna lie. Again, being a resident Kiko hater, I have to, I have to confess these are fucking hard. Even though I fucking hate the guy, I think these are fucking hard. Look at those. Oh, they're fucking sexy. That colorway would actually look really good on the MX-95. You know that? That colorway would look actually really good on the MX-95. If MX-95s were on ID, I would actually do this. Have it a white upper with some blue accents and then have the midsole or the, sorry, the, the midsole in the kind of, in that off-white ivory type colorway and then have the bubbles in orange. That would look really good on the MX-95, honestly. MX-95, that would look fucking banging. But yeah, big up Kiko. The shoes look fucking sick. I like them. Coming very, very soon. Oh, and there's always oh, a matching tracksuit too. Okay, the tracksuit I don't like. I don't like a tracksuit with shorts. That's a bit, yeah. That's given Central European, Eastern European, and I'm not really with that. A tracksuit with shorts and like football socks. Nah, I'm good on that one. I'm good on the, I'm good on the tracksuit, but the shoes themselves are fucking hard. I'm not gonna lie, the shoes themselves are fucking fucking hard. I love the shoes, the shoes I love. Um, moving on from that one, let's get in some other shit here. <clears throat> we got some other stuff here, courtesy of Brain Dead. Big up Brain Dead, one of my favorite brands. I have many many things from Brain Dead. I have random stuff from Brain Dead. I got like bags. I got vans. Um, I got some pants. I got some random shit because you know Brain Dead is one of those brands that does a lot of things really really fucking well so big up kyle eng and i forgot the other guy who does it with him as well my na name escapes me now but big respect to those dudes so brain did have linked up um with clark's originals to reimagine the desert nomad oh i like these so we've got this cow print design on the upper um we have this nice black tubing here on the front and also we have this exposed or we have this kind of you know overly overly black um crepe outsole and midsole but they look fucking beautiful. I really love these. These are really fucking nice. It's giving kind of, it's giving Harajuku, um, it's giving that type of vibe. If you know some of those street style pictures from those magazines back in the day, you would see somebody wearing shoes like these, probably made by Campo, some other brand with like an exaggerated midsole and an outsole. So it's kind of reminding me of all those guys would have their shoes, you know, looking crazy with rolled up pants and shit. So I, I like how it's styled, especially with the rolled up silver denim here. This kid made him look really fucking cool. Yeah, this looks really great. I'm sure that shirt is also branded as well, right? This mesh shirt, the button up. They look fucking great. I like these. I like that. You got the nice cow print on there. I guess it's a cow print. In, is it like pony hair? I think that's pony hair. This is, this reminds me of the of the heady days of Hideout. Hideout used to always have really fun collaborations like this. Big up Andrew Bunny. Um, he used to always do some good shit with Hyder back in the day, design wise. And obviously, Michael Copperman and all those guys at Gimme Five would make always some nice, you know, pony hair, furry type looking shoe. Kind of dandy ish, you know. I love that kind of vibe. These are really fucking nice. I really fucking like these. I'm not going to lie. I'll definitely have to try and buy these when they come out. Um, let's see what the blurb says. Um, they're saying here, Brain Dead and Clark's original teaming up to reimagine the Desert Nomad. The collaboration iteration offers a shoe in upper crafted from pony hair with cow pattern injecting Brain Dead's DNA into the Desert Trek successor. A dark green new buck leather peel patch. Oh, I like that. Dark green. That's an interesting color at the back, isn't it? So you got the cow print here in pony. You got the black piping on the front, the black outsole and midsole, and then you've got a nice green here at the back here. I'm not mad at that. Oh, I didn't see that. A nice green hit. So they're, they're going to look really cool if you roll, if you wear them as this kid rolled them or had they been styled with a pair of like baggy selvage denim. You roll it up a few times, some nice socks. Hard. I ain't mad at these at all. Check out the shoe above. The Brain Dead Clark's original Desert Nomad is available May 7th at all Brain Dead stores. Um, retailing for $290, oh, $290 though. 44,000 Japanese yen. $290. That's a lot of Wonga, isn't it? Fucking hell. That's, is that going to be 200, 200 pounds, basically? 290 pounds? That's a lot of money, bro. God damn. For clocks? Come on, bro. Let's see what they're saying here. Um, Shop all. That's that mesh shirt that they got in the lookbook. $290 for a pair of clocks. I don't know about that one. I don't know what I feel about that. But yeah, that's the thing with Brain Dead. They're one of the... I think if I was going to have a brand now, if I was going to start my own brand, I think I'd start it similar to Brain Dead or like what Tom Sachs has with Tom Sachs Studios. I like how they just make all random miscellaneous stuff. Like, are these like gardening gloves? They have like gloves here. 
They have tote bags. They have um, aprons, records, uh, flower pot, you know, um, what do you call it? Water pots and shit. This is what I'd do if I had a brand. I'd make like, I'd be, I'd be as interested and as infused about making gardening gloves, right? They got here brain dead and Spotify, 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 as in Spotify, the record company or Spotify, the music platform, or is there another, is there like a Spotify? Oh yeah, there's a, yeah look, there's a, how, how, what the, what's the club? That's a, such a weird collaboration. Spotify collaborated with brain dead on, on gardening gloves. Interesting. But yeah, I'd I'd rather do something like this. I think this is far more interesting than doing like shitty standard streetwear shit. Like having a brand where you have all these like miscellaneous things that you also make because this kind of adds to your world. This is what it, this is where you really tell a story about the stuff that you're into. That's a bit different than most streetwear brands. That's always skateboarding, always hip hop, always graffiti. Do you know what I mean you're like okay, cool? I'm into gardening. I also like listening to records. You know, whatever else may be. Like I'm also into into art by, based on the collaborations I do. Um, that mesh shirt that's in the lookbook how much is that it looks pretty cool too the mesh shirt is available there um 230 pounds god damn son brain that isn't cheap nowadays is it? it's not fucking cheap anymore well it never was super super cheap but it was cheaper than this shit okay fair enough 290 usd let's i want to know how much it is going to be in the uk price let's see if they got a price here on the actual site did you have a fucking link of the price so i can see how much it's going to be uk wise no idea and they don't have any information here for man special projects let's see what they got on special projects they also did a really cool um collab but actually with that skate with that what's that skate brand i think it's like them them in i don't know if any anyone who listens to my podcast actually um skates or roller skates but they did a really cool brand with um a collaboration i think it's called dem skates or something like that like a a, a brand that does um really cool um basically inline skates in different colorways and shit i thought that was pretty cool but yeah no idea on what's going on here um special pro i'd like to see some more stuff from them regarding how much those shoes are but they look really cool big up brain dead for these amazing desert nomad shoes i'll definitely wear them i would definitely definitely fucking wear them big up fucking brain dead i love it i fucking love it moving on from that one we also have these which I love. Um, I've always been a fan of the Air Night uh, of the Air Flight Night eighty nines. Anyway, to be honest, mostly because the midsole is obviously taken from a Jordan Four. But I thought they're a really nice shoe for like a mid or like a quarter. Yeah, I guess you call them like a mid. I think they're really nice. I'd prefer to have these um, Nike Air Flight eighty nines than wear a Jordan One mid. I think Jordan Ones should only be worn in highs. I think Jordan One lows look poor and they look fucking malnourished i think jordan mids look horrendous they look like fucking um what do you call it team jordans jordan one highs are the only ones you should be wearing but if you want that kind of mid shape i think you're better off buying a pair of um 89s because i think 89s are a little bit less bulky than jordan even though i love jordan fours and they're what in my top five best shoes of all time in terms of models i understand why some people maybe don't like jordan fours because they've got a really big tongue they've got that massive um heel guard and flaps and wings and shit there's a lot going on there but i think the 89 is a nice streamlined version of it and obviously it kind of makes me think of like the 80s and shit with this really small swoosh just right at the back over here like it looks it's fucking great colorway it's a great model and pj tucker did a did his ting when it comes to the colorway this sort of like dusty blue new buck colorway is fucking amazing and i love how it's just like a pe it's a player exclusive colorway style instead of just a collaboration with loads of logos you know what i mean like because back in the day when they did player exclusives it'll just be like a colorway so you get a chance to just do the colorway and the colorway usually be one that you'd never ever see in retail so i love that you know i don't i can't remember the last time i saw a, a fucking a flight 89 in a you know in this sort of like a neutral light kind of color or this bright type of neutral color usually they're always like in a dark color you don't you don't really see them in this like nice but you know buttery baby blue suede so they look really cool um you got a mixture of i guess from what i can see here squinting at the screen you've got a mix of like it looks like this is like um cement leather i think is that crinkled leather like what you get on the cement so it looks like it's the same leather you get on cement freeze but instead of it being cement colorway it's blue then you've got new buck and then you've got some mesh on the tongue and some perforations here on the side i i think it's a really nice colorway and then obviously you've got the white piping along this kind of mud guard area thing at the front here I really like them. I'm not going to lie. 89s have always been a very underrated model. And again, with me being a cross training 80s shoe guy head, 
I love these. I'd actually wear them to the gym. That's um. Oh, look at the look at the leather on these bad boys. Okay, it's all over. It's been covered in this crinkled leather pattern thing. Oof, that looks good. When they zoom into a level like this, that means this looks good in person. And I love the piping. I love the piping here on the mudguard bit too. I love that. It's probably not good for like day-to-day -day use. It's probably going to get dirty really quickly. But I do love the way it looks. So you don't have any raw edges along some of these little cuts there. I love that. you got the white Nike symbol there on the tongue. You've got the, oh, you've got the PJ's um, na name, um, na what you got, initials and number at the back. you got Flight and then you got PJ17 at the back here, embroidered, which I also like. No fucking, you know, stamp there, embroidered so it lasts forever. And also the piping around the back as well. A nice mesh bit here at the back too. I love the consideration for just simplicity. Not going for crazy colors because, again... I'm sure doing sneaker collaborations is really hard. It's a lot harder than it looks because you get the keys to the castle and it can be hard not to go crazy. So the fact that he didn't go crazy on them and just kept them, you know, one tone blues is really nice. Then on the inside uh, tongue, you've got 32E written there. And then you've also got the brand logo on the outside with the red. And you've got the clouds, um, you know, motif, I guess, on the insole. So the baby blue, I'm, I'm assuming, is notaring to clouds and shit. So I love these. Let's see what the blurb says. The blurb says, PJ Tucker holds the crown as the king of sneakerheads in the NBA. While he, ha while, he and, while he and his Los Angeles Clippers are knockout of the tonight's must-win game six matchup against Luka Doncic's Dallas Mavericks, Tucker has his own Nike Air flight to launch. Presented in sky blue colorway, Tucker drew inspiration from the skies and the Boeing 777-300 in particular. So what, he, this is inspired by Drake Air. <laughs> really, he's, he got inspired by Drake Air. With a premium finish and the recently reintroduced silhouette, it's 470... What?! There's only 472 pairs. Oh, okay. China is then. I have to get these from China. When these hit my Shenzhen factories, that's when I'll cop. There's only 472 pairs. Are assigned a seat number on the tongue's interior. Okay, that's why you get the 32E. Um, corresponding to one of the 472 seats located within the affirmation aircraft. It's a Carolina Blue-esque upper. Sees various pebbled leather layers team up with the matching grey swooshes. I wish he'd done with this a wider release because he is the king of, you know, player exclusives and exclusive colorways in general. But because he's a fucking current NBA player, obviously he gets all the fucking hot shit and obviously he's a Nike athlete. But it would be nice if he would have reversed it and said, hey, I always get all this shit because I'm a famous athlete. I'm going to now give stuff to the people. I'm going to make it more readily available because I feel like everybody should have access to this sort of shit. That's what he should have done. Instead of making the money, 472 pairs. You're just asking for fakes. You're asking for it. And I'm going to get a pair because I want one. I want a fucking pair. So when they hit the Shenzhen factories, I'm I'm finna cop. I would love to cop it legitly, but 472 pairs, no way I'll get a hold of that. Probably 400 of them have already been backdoored. It's Carolina Blue-esque upper, um, very, it's just pebbled leather from there. The Air Brand Sock Liner um, depicts a cloudy sky. Release for the PJ Tucker Air Flight Sky Blues is taking place exclusively at the Better Generation storefront in Houston. And in-store release is set to go down alongside online raffle. There's an online raffle for them open now. Okay, there's actually an online raffle open for them right now. Really? For $140. $140. Let's see. I'm 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 gonna enter this raffle and we're gonna see what I won. But there's absolutely no way I'm gonna be winning 472. Uh, come on, that's not possible. Did most of them have been fucking backdoored? So there's no way that I'm gonna be able to get a pair. Absolutely no way. Oh, the launch closed eight hours ago. Fuck off, then. Fuck off. Rep factories. Whenever you're ready, I'm fucking gonna buy a pair. We can't buy them normally. Absolutely annoying. But anyway, big up. PJ Tucker still. Big up PJ Tucker one time. Big up PJ Tucker one fucking time. Oh, let's go up Bottega Veneta too. Um, big up Bottega Veneta. Big up Matteo Blasi. Matteo Blasi is basically proving that Daniel Lee wasn't really that guy. Ever since Daniel Lee left Bottega Veneta under very un, you know, unclear circumstances, um, that Matteo Blasi ended up taking over. And he is now restored... But take a minute to what it was when Daniel Lee was allegedly there and doing bits. You know, like I was like, what, 2019, 2020 era. 
they're looking really fucking good, man. So this pre fall collection, I think usually pre fall resort collections are usually proof of where a brand's really at. You know what I mean? In terms of like, okay, the levels are still being maintained. And for this, yo, he's doing his fucking thing here. This guy is doing his thing here. You cannot fucking lie. Every look is fucking smoking. One of my favorite looks actually is this look here with a. I know some of you probably wouldn't like it and don't really agree, but I think the look with the skirt has to be one of my favorite looks I've seen in a long time. Um, it's almost like this weird denim skirt quilt thing that he has going on with one of the models wearing. I fucking love it. Um, I think it's look number five or six or something. A guy with the long hair. It's styled amazingly well as well. Um, obviously that's a big crutch shot there. <laughs> big up. But I think it's I think it's might be look number six. Is it look number six or five? Which one is it? Where can I find it? There it is, yeah. Look number six. I love this. This is one of my favorite looks from fucking Bottega. This looks fucking beautiful. Look at this skirt. It's done oh, it's done in that weird kind of like is it crochet? Whatever I forgot where you hey what you call that um actual um technique of looping the fucking um, leather in between each other. But that looks so good, especially with the boots. That looks amazing. I love that. It's almost like a like a wrap around skirt kilt type of affair, and obviously with the flannel as well. It's looking fucking excellent. I fucking love that. Big up Mateo Blasi. One of my favorite looks in this collection is definitely look number six. So big up him for that one. Um, you got a nice crotch shot there. What else do we have here? Um, this this is a really nice look as well. But the suiting, I'm not gonna lie about that one. Let's go. Let's actually go back to this. I actually want to go back to the main collection. And just see it normally again because i think this is really one of the strongest resort collections i've seen in a fucking long time so big up my terror blasey for just doing the fucking business so let's scroll down again and let's see it all again from the beginning um so yeah the get the look with the kill i love um we continue again i love the pattern on this shirt hopefully this comes in men's this shirt here with the bars with the blue and red bars i fucking love that you got a nice um, cardigan here that model's wearing. I also love this. This look here, number 10, is a look that Rocky wore. So I think ASAP Rocky is now firmly a Bottega Veneta guy. He's not Luebe anymore. For a short period of time, he was always stunting in Jonathan Anderson designed Luebe. But now he's not. Now he's Bottega Veneta and he's getting stuff super early. He's been wearing this for months, um, this particular look as well. Those loafers are so fucking beautiful. Those loafers are fucking gorgeous. Um, I love that. I love the styling with the belt around the chambray jacket, the chambray shirt, sorry. Oh, I love the woolly hat. That's actually a good idea for me, especially with my hair. I love this stripe woolly hat. The same stripe on this shirt is applied to this like um, very fluffy woolly hat. That looks really cool. It, it, it kind of looks like a snood. They can also wear as a hat, right? Like a little scarfing. I love the look of this as well. Um, also, this top is one of my favorites. It look number 14. The tailoring on look number 18 is great. Oh, look at the bag on look number 18. I wonder if that's a Denim Tears collab. That looks kind of Denim Tears-ish, isn't it? That Pan-African flag colorway with the black and the green and the red. I wonder if that's like a nod to Denim Tears or not. Not too sure. This bag again, this massive bag is really nice also. Interesting design. It looks like a backpack. I think that might be a backpack. It's almost like a bucket, like a big bucket tote. But it's got like a flap closure in the front. Which would deli, you know, we think would look like a backpack, but then it's got, it's only got one strap on the outside there to hold on to. Oh no, it's got two, sorry. It's got two, but the model isn't holding it. So yeah, it's definitely just a regular tote bag. Um, I love this. Is it, is that corduroy? Look number 19. I love the corduroy. I also love the sock shoes here. So Bottega have got a version of the sock pods or the, you know, whatever the shoes that Yeezy does and Balenciaga does. But they do them in this stripy colorway. And it looks a little bit more substantial. It looks a little bit more sturdier. It looks like it's got a thicker sole. And it looks like it's like constructed. It's like a, it looks like there's a shell on the inside. But they've got a sock on the outside. It's a different version of a sock. So it's like a, you know, it's like a plimsoll shoe. But it's got like a sock cover on it. As opposed to like the sock being the main form factor of the shoe. I quite like that as well. I like that flip on a sock shoe. Um, you've got these boots. I think are going to be everywhere. I think everyone's going to be wearing these particular boots here in look number 21. These army boot lace-ups, I think, are going to be very popular. So don't be surprised if you see a ton of people on the timeline wearing those uh, Bottega boots there. Because, you know, that's a flex too, right? Having fucking black, um, you know, boots like that as made in Bottega is fucking cool. Um, this bag is pretty nice as well on look number 22. 
Again, this model on look number 26 looks cool. Another version of the sock shoe. This time the sock shoe is like mostly, that look, that's like a colorway you'd get when you go to Uniqlo. Uniqlo have this kind of like speckled type of colorway on a sock. That tote bag is gorgeous in that f orange color. Is absolutely stunning. I'd wear, I'd wear the fuck out of that. I really love that. Nice statement piece tote there. This look here is pretty cool as well. Um, look number 30 is also gorgeous with the vest tucked into the jeans. I wonder if the jeans are similar to what he did before where they made out of leather. They look genie. I love the I love the bandana. That's also a bag. I think that's what it is, right? It's like a, It looks like a, a bandana that you wrap around your neck. But I think it's actually a bag. So it's actually a, a bag in the shape of a bandana. Um, I quite like that as well. This look number 28 is probably a little bit G-A-Y for me. It looks like something... Um, What's his name? What's that guy's name again? Brian Boy would wear. This is like a Brian Boy fit with the high-waisted trousers with a belt and the big shirt pockets tucked in there. Not for me. Uh, look number 32 is definitely all of me with a cardigan on top of another cardigan on top of some leather pants. I'm all for that. Oh, I love the pattern on look number 36. That's definitely... Um, I forgot that woman's name, but um, the mixed race lady. Uh, Diana Ross's... Fuck, Tracy Ross. This is definitely a Tracy Ellis Ross look. I could see her wearing this. Even a woman looks like she's styled like Tracy Ellis Ross. This is, yeah. Look number 36 looks like a Tracy Ellis Ross look. Um, I love, oh, look at that shirt on look number 35. It's like a tunic, but it's made, it's a it's a tunic, but with a collar. Like a button-up tunic. I, I actually like this. Very, you know, Adrian Leon Talley, RIP. Oversized tunic type of top. I really like that. That's actually quite nice. I'm not going to lie. Um... Oh, I also love this as well. I don't know what that style is, but it's essentially it's a it's a shirt where the button kind of unbuttons next to your shoulder, so you have this nice swooping effect. Give you a little bit of skin there on your neck, on your collarbone. Show people how skinny you are, and obviously the detail of your fucking jewelry tucked into the pants, or or maybe that's a jumpsuit. Maybe that's a jumpsuit. I'm not too sure. Maybe that's a jumpsuit. But either way, I like that as well. I like this look. Look number thirty eight. This almost looks like she's taking off her top. If you squint, this looks like she's almost taking the top off. And that's the inside of the dress. I love that also. The print on look number 39 is also nice with the skirt and on the shirt. The overshirt looks kind of dickyish. Looks like it could be a, a LL Bean style shirt with the stripes and shit. Maybe heavy duty. I'm, I'm not I'm not mad at that either. All the bags are lovely in, in this resort collection. You know, Matthew, Matteo Blasi feels like, I feel like he's up the ante of the bags and accessories. Fucking hell, you went crazy on this one. Um, another version of the sock shoe, this time with the stripey colorway. Um, yeah, he went brazy with the bags, isn't it? They're everywhere. I think that's the same shape of the bag um, that's underneath the bandana, I think, there. Look number 45. Another great look, look number 48. I love the styling of the belt around the mid section of the suit jacket. I think it looks pretty cool. Because what you do with this is it, it kills two birds with one stone, I think. When you style a suit like this, if you want to wear an oversized suit, but then you cinch at the waist with a belt, you get to have the oversized suit, shit like that. But you also get to have a bit of, you know, fitting with the belt around your waist. So I don't mind that. Oh, that's the same tunic, isn't it? That's a fucking long... Imagine me wearing this. Look number 46. A big batty time. My ass just shaking in the air. That's like a male sundress, isn't it? I love that. That's like a male fucking sundress. Let's see who's got a real big batty. Let's see whose rumper is really shaking in the wind. I'm about to have done that. That's fucking hot. That's fucking hot. That's hot. Um, look number 50. I also like with the oversized trench coat. Um, what else do we have here that I like? Oh, this is the coat that Rihanna was wearing, isn't it? Look number 54. She'd been wearing this for months. This is the jacket that Rihanna was wearing. You can't go wrong with a cheetah print fur, faux fur overcoat. It's giving Kate Moss, you know, it's giving, you know, Parisian chic, Emanuela Old, Par Vogue Paris, you know, back in the day where I love that, right? With the tortoise, um, big glasses on as well. Like, that's a that's a very chic look. I could wear the fuck out of that jacket also. I love that cheetah print coat. I'm not going to lie. Again, with this, I'm not sure sure what that crochet thing is called, but I love it. Again, oh, look at that look. That's beautiful too, that one with the white and the yellows. I love the styling on this look, look number 57 with a bright red overcoat. That looks fucking special. Um, the powder blue suit. That This would go really well with the PJ Tuckers, isn't it, right? Where, where are the fucking PJ Tuckers? That suit actually there would go really well with this with the PJ Tuckers. 
I'm not gonna lie. Like if you had a pair, if you had a pair of these, and you and you wore them with those, it looked pretty cool. Obviously, you wouldn't because most people don't know these things. But if you want some matchy matchy thing, the PJ Tuckers would look sick with that suit. Um, we continue. Oh, I love these love these silver heels. Again, we got the blue suit. Nice jumper. Oh, look at that pub. Ooh, look at that purple overcoat. Look at that. It's almost like a cloud. It's almost plush. Look at that. I don't know what the fuck that material is, but whatever it is, it's fucking lovely. And again, look how nice it contrasts on black skin. I love that colorway. Um, again, that's a bag. Okay, that bag is a okay. It is a backpack. I knew it. I was right. That isn't a strap. It's, it is a backpack. That brown bag. That's a really lovely backpack. Look how worn that leather will look after a while when it's beat up. And it's the same class as on the that's on the the loafers too. Oh, I love that color too on black skin. Looks fucking gorgeous. That knitwear jumper. This jumper is going to be everywhere. Look number 17, 72. This jumper is going to be in every editorial. Every editorial is going to have that fucking jumper. That jumper is fucking sexy. Oh, another Tracy Ellis look as well. Look number 73. But let's go and focus in on those loafers. One more second and then we'll move on. These fucking loafers, I need. I fucking need these loafers. I don't know how much they're going to be. But I fucking need these Bottega Veneta loafers. They're going to be probably, i say, 400 probably. But they look so cool. I love the barbed wire design here on the clasp. This barbed wire gold design, it looks fucking beautiful. Wow, I need these loafers so bad. The leather looks fucking gorgeous on them as well. Look at those loafers. Sexy, sexy, sexy. Yeah, I love them. I love them. Anyway, um, result collection courtesy of the one and only Matteo Blasi over there at Bottega Veneta let's read a blurb here courtesy of Nicole Phelps on Vogue Runway in a few words the initial talk I had with the team was that we would have been ready to wear for Bottega when they started to make the bags in late 60s of course the idea was almost to work on something um ana anachronic we don't want to go too literal. It was the idea of a modern time traveler. Matteo Blasi's fall, Bottega Veneta's show was among the most talked about of the season. Um, admired not just for the transformative set with his um, Murano glass cactus sculptures, the Le Corbusier stools made from scorched uh, wood. He was moved by the turbulent times of the conjured and resilient landscape, but also for the way that he elevated essential clothes like the cocooning pico of the first look. This pre-fall lineup was developed before the show collection, but it came from the same instincts of the purposeful and utilitarian the late 60s and 70s witnessed the birth of the women's liberation movement and the decomorcization of fashion they're not unrelated subjects blasi has given this season's practical items at Bottega Veneta a polish but he made a point of saying i wanted these things a little bit easier softer and more everyday and less statements the development process involved lots of photo research including an old interview magazines andy warhold loved Bottega. and i said no he explained to see how people layered and mixed the match it led to results like the suede skirt layered with suede pants that you see <coughs> you see here um and the trim crew neck and the trim collar shirt and tuck belt jeans the spirit has been channeling by bourgeoisie but um democratic he suggested pointing to a check button down and uh, with a full skirt on the handbag front he pursued a similar goal pushing styles that don't necessarily forego um, the famous woven leather straps um, there is much more pour over on the lookbook the Miami pastel pant suits the colorful suede um, intercratio separates the included a repeat of that skirt of a pant silhouette and a turquoise and le red leopard leather pants as well Blasi just can't help himself their statement making every single one but yeah he smashed it honestly he smashed it amazing collection loads of stuff there I would buy and I'm sure a lot of it's going to be popular out there in the fucking street great to see you. big up Matteo Blasi we'd love to fucking see it he's putting up numbers over there at Flippin Bottega anyway my friends that's it Agassino Zinga show episode number 775 is out I have to head to the gym and head to work it's getting late thank you for tuning in I'm gonna play that's my tune today today is Hoverdy Heartstring Thank you so much for tuning into the Axel Zinger show. If you like the show, you like what you see, please make sure you like the stream down below. That'd be greatly appreciated. Links to all my stuff is in the description and all that good stuff. It's going to fade to black for those of you who are just listening. But here we go. It's Hoverdy Heartstrings, my tune today. Big up everybody tuning in. Appreciate and love you all. Mm -hmm.